I am once again facing a new round of allegations, backlash, drama, whatever you want to call it. So I find myself standing here once again by myself at... Profoundly sorry. You don't mean that. Yep. Hello everyone, it's good to be back. I missed you all. And today we're going to be talking about the deaf noodle situation. Or more, the Twitter meltdown. Now this has been one crazy Twitter roller coaster over the last few days. It went from one tweet to a million tweets to a six hour long Twitter circle conversation. And I'm gonna be completely honest, I wasn't there for the whole six hours. I was there for maybe three off and on. Even that was still a long time to be listening to the art of deflection. And just a warning, I'm going to be low-key roasting Deaf Noodles throughout most of this video, but it's just because he wants everyone to pull up or shut up and roast him to his face. But the thing is, you have to pay him $15, and I don't want to pay the $15. See this face? This is my office here in Los Angeles, and there's going to be a performance space in it. And what we're going to do in two weeks is we're going to start having roast battles. So everybody talking right now on the internet, I invite you to come to my office to say it to my face. Pay the $15 to get through the door, and welcome to the roast battle, baby. Let's see if you can survive the heat. Stop it. Get some help. All right, now, how did this situation all start in the first place? Well, people in Deaf Noodle's comment section were saying that Kavos and Papa Gut owned him. Then he went on to make a tweet saying he basically made Papa Gut. Papa Gut responds. Then he calls Papa Gut a P word as a joke. Now you might be wondering, how did Papa Gut own Deaf Noodles in the first place? Well, Deaf Noodles and Papa Gut had a debate a few months back. And because Deaf Noodles got so aggressive and defensive, he had to apologize to his fan base because of how poorly he treated Papa Gut in this debate. I mean, the whole thing came off as really childish on his end, where he didn't seem to want to listen to any of Papa Gut's points, which his points were valid. Instead of really listening to what Papa Gut had to say, Deaf Noodles instead attacked Papa Gut's character over a joke he had made in the past, which he has stated multiple times that joke was a big mistake on his end, and he doesn't condone it. And I'll get into that joke in a little bit, because it's important for context. And warning, this guy kind of talks a little bit vulgarly about the idea of what a p-word is, so just a heads up, and I'm about to read his tweet. MF got famous on TikTok for joking about effing 14 year olds, then gets offended someone jokes about him. But you know, he was right. I shouldn't have said that. I should have instead said he makes himself so small in his videos to hide the fact he, he looks like a p-word. I don't really see the part where this is a joke because he adds quotes around the word joking when referring to Papa Gut as if he wasn't joking about what I'm about to tell you. Papa Gut's original joke was. Another reason why this doesn't come off as a joke is because Deaf Noodles tagged FBI Los Angeles saying put this mf on a watch list he looks mad suspicious whether this is a joke or not it just comes off as weird and this might be a crazy idea but people without the extra context or knowing who papa gut is who just maybe stumble across this tweet are gonna think this guy is a p word who needs to be watched by you know law enforcement and for the record i don't condone papa gut's original joke either but i'm gonna say if he's apologized then that is what it is. The tweet from Papa Gut was, the joke was, if she's old enough to bleed, she's old enough to breed. Thank you very much, blah blah blah, for the advice. It was a satirical call out since he allegedly slept with a 14 year old. It's a joke I've condemned multiple times, but that person isn't interested in honesty. To me, both jokes were pretty disgusting and uncalled for, but I have to say that Dennis is not genuinely apologizing the way I think Papa Gut has. And now that you sort of know the context of the tweet, 
Let's get into why people are saying Deaf Noodles is an absolute hypocrite. He's saying there's a difference between a joke and a joke, depending on who's joking. It's weird. The bottom line is he is suing Keemstar right now for defamation or slander. Keemstar's tweet reads, Deaf Noodles has allegedly groomed girls from ages 12 to 15. Big YouTube source. Victims are scared of him and wish to stay anonymous, but may come forward soon. And the next tweet reads, Deaf Noodles has declined to give us comment on these allegations made against him. He used the word alleged, then he said it was a joke, and then, you know, Deaf didn't think it was a joke because he didn't have the word comedian in his bio. For legal reasons, that's a joke. For legal reasons, that's a joke. Admitted that it was made falsely and maliciously. The difference between me and Keemstar goes all the way back to 2019. Did an interview, and this has been something that I've repeated over and over again. Did an interview with Vulture, New York Magazine, where I explained that my show was a parody of his show, of Perez Hilton, and other news shows. That I have a parody news show. That it's satirical in nature, but it's a parody of a news show. But I'm not an actual news source and shouldn't be considered as such. In fact, at the top of my bios everywhere. <laughs> so, you know, there's that aspect of it also. It was sort of a weird excuse, if you ask me. His reasoning was Keemstar is a news drama channel. He's not a comedian, where he is a news drama channel who is a comedian, and that's a stark difference between a joke and slander, or in this case, libel. And I just want to say that I don't think if you put comedian in your bio that automatically makes you a comedian or automatically funny. Because from what I can see, basically none of his jokes land, they go over people's heads. And well, if you're a comedian and your jokes don't land, then what really are you? Emotional damage! You want some therapy? <laughs> and the fact that Deaf Noodles has been ignoring everyone. Everyone has either been roasting him or been giving valid advice. I was one of those people that were trying to give him advice, like, dude, you need a break. I wrote, what is happening here at Deaf Noodles? You really need to step away from the internet for a while. It would be in your best interest for your mental health and your career. You can't see the forest for the trees. Take a step back and analyze. Saying this as a fellow creator. And then he responded to somebody who said something along those lines, like, dude, you need a break. And his response was, you don't know me. You just watched my videos. You've never interacted with me in real life. Go outside and touch some grass, you know, paraphrasing. And then he says thank you for all the Twitter engagement and stuff. And I, I guess I'm pretty petty. I responded to it with, um, you're welcome. Negative 2k on YouTube though. I don't think Twitter engagement, you know, is making up your monthly income. And it's true, I mean. This Twitter stuff is gonna ruin his YouTube career because no one really sees he's joking. He just comes off as an asshole. And then we go into the six hour Twitter circle conversation where he just seems to deflect everything or somehow none of it is his fault. His response to it all was, I literally spent six hours and six minutes talking to about 50 different people, most of whom are my harshest critics. And now the narrative is I masterfully deflected every point and avoided accountability. Y'all realize by saying this, you're implying you're all idiots and I'm a genius, right? I'm gonna have to say hard no, because we cannot control if you're deflecting or not. If we believe your deflection, then maybe we'll be the idiot, but I'm pretty sure it's the other way around. Because if you're deflecting everything anyone says, it's not on them, it's on you. For example, Deaf Noodles absolutely condemned Papa Gut's joke, which he also condemns, but with this crazy reasoning, it's not funny, I quote, to F kids. Then why is it funny to make a P word joke calling someone a P word? Cause 
you know, need these sort of endangering kids elements to be there in order for that to be the joke. Dennis can make all these jokes, or Deaf Noodles can make all these jokes, but if Papa Gut makes something in the same vein, somehow he deflects that off of he's a bad person, or sort of implies that. You, you, you have no idea what the I, talking I, about. I really... Oh, man. You find comedy, and you don't... You, you have no... Your jokes are, if she bleeds, she breathes. If she, she can yeah, breathe... Yeah, see, like, see, I knew it. You just brought those up to try to deplatform me. It's a pathetic move, oh, man. I'm trying to deplatform you. I'm you, you literally... You, you Like, I literally explained why that was wrong. And your perspective is that that joke was appropriate. You made the point that you thought that that joke was okay, even though I disavowed the joke and tried to explain context. And now you're sitting here trying to deplatform me on it. You have an incredibly disingenuous mind. Everything that you say is so bad faith. And I'm expecting to sit here while you yell for 75% of the debate. I want to know from you. Is it funny for a grown man, a 14 year old, a grown man like you? No, I don't think that joke's about appropriate at all. Okay. So you think it's funny? You think it's a joke? Kids? No, not at all. I think it's disgusting. That's why I wouldn't joke about something you didn't So you don't think it's a joke? You don't think it's a joke? Kids? No, I think it's disgusting. So you agree with me putting the word joke in quotations in that tweet? Because oh, I don't yeah, find it to be like a joke. A really I... disingenuous uh, move here. But the intention was to okay. call out somebody who was, when they were 23, allegedly a 14-year-old, slept with a 14-year-old. So the okay. intent is very clear that that's what I'm calling out. You, on the other hand, are calling uh -huh. me a because yeah. you're unhinged and upset because your career is spiraling. And you point to me for the reason. You, you literally just said it had no harm. It and this absolutely instance, thankfully nothing. didn't because you have you no credibility as a content creator. That's, look, but it could. At the end of the day, that, so, so, so you think it's appropriate to make jokes? That's okay. Like I just want you to say it. I think it's appropriate to do any joke about anything. I think everything is fair game. I've said this I before. Just disagree. And like I said, it's a lot of deflection. And it's a lot of going in circles with him saying the same thing. It's a joke. I'm a comedian. People don't get my jokes. That's your problem, not mine. You know, this is paraphrasing. And I interacted with Chris the Narc online. And he said, you know, Def has always been like this. And I didn't know that. So then after this interaction, I decided to take a look into it. I watched Nicholas Diorio's video from about a year ago, as well as Internet Unwind's video. And that had a lot of information in it to take in and sort of unpack. And the conclusion I've come to is he definitely hides behind his jokes, his satire. If anyone else tries to make the same argument about themselves, well, it's not the same thing. Just because you have comedian in your bio doesn't mean everyone knows that you're supposedly a comedian. And since comedy is subjective, not everybody's gonna get your comedy, so you can't expect everybody to understand. Since everyone's taking this as not a joke, maybe you should reevaluate your comedy. For example, Leafy is here is banned off of YouTube because his satire was too much. You can't tell what's a joke and what's just blatant cyber harassment and bullying. And that's all it comes off as now. Well, anyways, that's all I have to say today. Please let me know what you think down in the comments below. Was I too harsh? Was I on the nose? It's good to be back. Give me any more content ideas because I have been out of the loop for about a month. And I will see you all next time. Bye!